Yeah, that angle. Do that one. Yep. <laughs> I know, man. No, not that one. Okay, so in studio today, got my friend, my buddy from Haiti. Well, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Connected to Haiti. Yeah. TJ Gillum, uh, thank you for being here at the time of this recording. Amen. You just preached an amazing sermon, and you're about ready to have to preach four or five more. Yeah, something like that. To the students mm -hmm. in Sampson, Alabama. Sampson, Alabama. Have you ever been there? I have not. Okay, it'd be an yeah, experience I'd, for you. At least I may I may have driven by it, but I have never stopped yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, never stopped there. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming to the Gulf Coast. Um, you know, for this time, our time together this afternoon, we're really just kind of having a free-flowing conversation sure. about who you are, what, what yeah. how God's been working in your life, and, um, you know, just kind of what you're learning about mm. leadership, but also... Mm. I mean, real leadership, like you mentioned today in your message, is being sent to serve. Mm -hmm. And so just how God's using you all over the world, it seems, in many yeah. different ways by being connected to Mission of Hope. Um, so number one, just wanted to say thank you. And, oh, I'm uh, glad to be here. Man, just tell us a little bit about who you are, how you came to know Jesus. I loved how you shared yeah. today. You were listening to Dr. Dre. Yeah. And then somehow <laughs> Jesus got involved Yeah, man, I was 90s rap. That's, yeah, that's 90s what I grew rap. up on. Yeah. But tell us a little about who you are, what you do, yeah. and uh, we'll just kind of take it from there. Yeah, so I, I grew up on a cattle farm in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, my family has lived in that same farm um, my whole life, and really uh, 15 years before I ever got there, my, my mom and dad and sister, and then... It's kind of a generational farm and we actually just sold it right um me. you know after my dad passed away last year but um man grew up you know riding four wheelers and doing all that just a kid and from you know rural arkansas and what city in arkansas little rock little rock okay, yeah so yeah um started dating my now wife in okay. ninth grade wow she walked in the first day of seventh grade and i said i'm gonna marry her and I told my mom and she wasn't and, your cousin and she was not my cousin <laughs> yes i but made that made joke in service to today and yeah I was like, I immediately regretted that, you uh -huh, know. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, you know, so you know, we've, we've been married now for twenty years. Wow. Got a sixteen-year-old son and a fifteen-year-old daughter. And tell me their uh, names, real quick. Mary Claire and Trey. Mary Claire. Yeah, I, think Mary, I said Mary Kate. Earlier yeah, and it's I had okay. It wrong. So we actually call her MC. Okay. You know, because yeah, apparently when she gets in high school, you know, you can change your name. I guess That's is right. a thing. But um, man, I met Jesus when I was twenty years old. I grew up in church, hmm. and um, you know, I knew I, I had a good pastor, but it, it was kind of an old school church where there's a lot of rules you know don't I, I knew everything not to do right but i didn't know really what to do right. i didn't know what it meant to follow jesus right right i just knew man i don't need to sin you know and i i actually i walked an aisle when i was uh eight years old okay there was a um we we're having a revival and you know the 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 evangelist said you know if you if you die tonight you know without right. jesus you're gonna go to hell i'm eight years old man like i, wanna I don't i don't want to do that yeah, you know, i want to go to heaven and so you know i went down i had no idea what that meant and um so, man, I, I lived a, you know, a life where I was like, well, maybe I'm a Christian, maybe I'm not. But um, I went to go play football in college, and I got hurt before I ever got to play. What college? Arkansas Tech University. Okay. And I got hurt and um, just was told I can't, couldn't play football. So I turned away. I was like, I don't – God, if, that, if that's really how you are, you know, like I've tried all my life uh, to not sin, okay. you know, to try to not mess up. I still wasn't doing. Right. But I was – but your relationship, but I was, but was, I was very daunting, you know. Yeah, yeah it was very like doing this, that's right. It was yeah. almost like I earn it, but I, right. but I even right. knew like I'm not earning it, but I just didn't want to offend God. Right, right, right. So I turned away from God. I actually spent about 18 months trying to disprove His existence. Wow, you know, and I was uh, in college. In college, okay. Yeah, and, um, I mean, I studied and I was asking, you know, trying to pick holes in everybody's face systems, and mm. um, and man, it was it was it was pretty ugly, mm. you know, and. Uh, just had some different story parts, of, you know, or got real involved in the gym scene and mm. uh, bodybuilding and powerlifting. We'll never know that. Right, yeah. right. Um, and, um, man, it was just a Sunday night. I was driving back mm. to school one night after visiting my parents um, my junior year, right at the beginning of my junior year. Mm. And uh, it, it wasn't an audible voice from God, but it might as well have been. It was mm. so clear that it was God speaking to me. Again, I was probably going 100 miles an hour in my Mustang and, you know, probably listening to Dr. Dre or Snoop, you know, one of the yeah. two. <laughs> And um, not Blunder, probably not, probably not yeah. the band Blunder. Yeah, that, that is just like top tier <laughs> punk that nobody, I mean, only no, select I, I definitely did not listen to yeah. that. And, um, you know, the question that I heard, and I remember like it was five minutes ago, was, TJ, what are you going to do with me? So let me ask a quick question. Yeah. So you didn't just come from a youth rally or a sermon. Mm -hmm. You weren't listening to K-Love or no. it just N driving down the road. Just driving down the road. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I went home that weekend, you know, I had to get some money from parents. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, I mean, I, I went home just, I went home on the weekends hmm. to help my dad around the farm. Okay. That's what I did. Okay. Because um, so I- still a close connection with your family. Oh, yeah. Even though faith at that time. Yeah, yeah. we just, you know, and it was, 
anytime I was around my mom, I was really good at putting on a mask. Okay. You know, my mom was, um, she was definitely the faith leader of our family. Okay. My dad didn't, my dad went to church occasionally, but he didn't become a believer until about eight years ago. Wow. And so, um, but my dad was my hero, my best friend, and yeah. I, I didn't want him to know like what was going on in my life, so I didn't want to disappoint him. Right. So I just put a mask on when I went home. I was like, yeah, everything's great. Okay. You know? And uh, man, I everything just changed that Sunday mm. night. I was just driving back, you know, to go back to the apartment and mm. get, you know, head back to school in the gym. Yeah. And um, man, the Lord just changed my life right there. Well, let me ask this question then. Okay. What what was the phrase or the mindset or the concept or the question that you felt came at that moment? Was it what are you doing? Or yeah, what? you know, it was TJ. What are you going to do with me? What are you going to do with I, me, man? I, so like Saul to Paul. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I wasn't you know ravaging the church, right, you know, yeah. but it it really was a, a moment of just complete clarity. Wow, you know, for spiritually and even just mentally for mm. me because I, you know, I was just pretty deep in other things, and right. um, man, the Lord just I knew it was Him, mm. and I. I I couldn't think of anything else. I was like, Lord, yes. Hmm. You know, you, and you know, whenever you go to try to disprove things about God, you only prove God. Right. Case for Christ. Yeah. I mean, you, you only, it only confirms more than what you really wanted it to. Right. And that was true for me too, you know, because I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to follow him Mm. because he allowed this to happen to Mm -hmm. me, you know, type Mm -hmm. thing. And, um, man, when I met him, you know, I went to the BCM, Baptist Collegiate Ministry, mm. on Monday and, you know, told the director what I was doing and, wow. or what had happened. So from that Sunday to that Monday, you're, yeah, the you're next taking night. steps. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I told Melanie that night. I, I pulled into her apartment. and Dating at the no, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. knocked on the door, and I said, hey, this is what happened. I mean, she just, she was like, I'm so happy, you know. So that's a good place to pause just for a moment because, like, you know, often when you hear someone make a profession of faith or – just have that line drawn mm. in the sand. One of the first steps they tell you to do is tell somebody. Yeah. Because if you kind of keep it to yourself, it can quickly become something that the right. birds of the air, to borrow Jesus' right. phraseology, just snatch away. So that night, you tell Melanie. Yeah, I told Melanie. The next day, you tell someone mm-hmm. who's in spiritual leadership in your mm-hmm. immediate area. That's a huge step in the right direction. Yeah. And yeah. It, so I have an addictive personality, right? Okay. I, I'm either all in or all out right. on whatever I do. If I say right. yes, Watch out. Air Jordans. You know, yeah. Oh, in. man. All about some Air Jordans. It's kind of like you with YOLO. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, that's right. I, uh, I went and told you know, the director, and he was like, man, you got to get out of the gym. You got to really? you he said, change you, your community. Yeah, change, change the people you're around. Mm-hmm. And so I went, I went up to the gym and met with a couple guys and, that I was tight with. And I said, hey, guys, I'm not. I, I'm out. Wow. You know, I, I'm, I'm done. How was that received? Uh, not well. Not well. You know, yeah. and I just told him, I was like, man, if, you know, because the gym work can get pretty brutal once you get into like the underbelly of it and mm. not just oh, I'm working out but the guys I mean their their career is trying to be a bodybuilder or a power mm. lifter and I just told him I said man if y'all gonna hit me with a barbell or something do it to my face because I've never done anything behind your back wow so I didn't um, and that's even a fascinating story where 12 years later I ended up leading one of my one of my workout partners one of those wow. guys to the Lord in that's a gym awesome. 100 miles away wow you know? that's <laughs> so cool. it's just this crazy like God yeah. brought it all the way around yep. You know, and I was, it, it was a wild, wild time because wow. he was amazed that I stuck with it. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's amazing to see and like 10 years plus yeah. two of faithfulness. Yeah. I was in a, do. I was in a gym in Benton, Arkansas, wow. and I was working out and I noticed this guy kept looking at me and he looked familiar, but I wasn't sure. Mm. You know, and we see a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. You know, and um, I was like, man, I, I told Melanie we were working out. It's Thanksgiving break. And I said, I think I know him, but I'm not mm. sure. And he comes over to me. And uh, he says, your name, TJ? And my first thought was, uh-oh. Yeah. You know, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what world do I know you from? <laughs> which, yeah. which part of my life are yeah, you from? Exactly. And he said, hey, man, this is I'm Corey. And that was my workout partner who mm. was a professional bodybuilder as well. Okay. And um, I was like, man, you've lost a lot of weight. You know, I mean, he was a whole lot smaller. And uh, he'd, he'd been kicked off a of police squad, you mm. know, because of steroids. Mm. And um, he... Um, been through several divorces mm. and man we started talking said what are you doing now tj i was like well i'm i'm a pastor wow he goes wow man you you did it you stuck with it i said yeah and i said you know we started talking about life and he said man i think i want that wow so i ended up leading him to the lord yeah in john's gym doesn't even exist anymore in benton arkansas wow and uh and then he died a few years later of wow. an aneurysm wow you know and so i was just like lord that's amazing yeah you know that um i wouldn't honestly like i didn't go seek him out you right. know i was just like okay well, Corey, we're here, man. Like, right. what's going on with you? Right. You know, and so it, it's just fun, man. You know, and so uh, jumped into ministry. 
you know, right, right, off, the bat. right off the bat. Okay. Um, I, I haven't ever held a secular job. Wow. Uh, you know, I've done full-time ministry and I started a home building business for a little bit, but I did that while, while, you're while I was a student yeah. pastor and, um, done a personal training thing here and there. But I mean, I've been a full-time minister since I was 20. Okay. At the end of 20. Okay. So yeah. tell me a little bit about that journey because you have kind of a full resume of ministry experience. Yeah. Now, Power Team is a part of that resume. <laughs> it's like ripping the phone book. Well, Team stuff. Impact. Team you Impact. Know, so okay. it's, a little, it's an offshoot of Power offshoot. Team. Okay. I did a few things with them. Okay, you know, they, right uh, so I, That's how I tell people, who is he? Well, he used to be on like Power Team. Like, oh, wow. That's awesome. So I was a fill in, basically. Okay, yeah. I, I wasn't like employed full time by them. So tell us what that is. The other, not team, you know. Um, yeah. What would you call it? Team Impact? Team Impact. Yeah, tell us what that is. Because Power Team, that, they, yeah. they had some things happen and they had to, you know, disenfranchise and start right. a new, they started a new group called Team Impact. And and I was a student pastor in Bryant. And right after I came on staff, they said, hey, TJ, we have Team Impact coming in. Have you ever heard of them? I was like, I, who's that? They're like Power Team? Like, yeah, kind of like them. Mm. And we haven't done anything with it. So can you run it? And it's just uh, a couple months out. I was like, uh, sure. Sure, yeah. So all those guys come in, you know, and I mean, these guys are they're pretty big. They're strong. I mean, they're professional power lifters and wrestlers and former pro, you know, football players. These guys are giants. And uh, and so, you know, my job, part, part of my job is to find them a gym to go work out at every okay. day because they were there for, I don't know, five or six days. Okay. Because you do school assemblies all throughout the week yeah. and then it ends in a big rally and then they okay. did a Sunday morning type thing. Okay. So... I went to work out with them every day. I said, "Hey, you know, can I can I work out with you guys?" And I was out lifting them on some oh, of their things, wow. you know. <laughs> so, so you're not competitive I, at all. No, I'm yeah. very competitive. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I have a structure for that. I have short arms. I got T-Rex arms, you know. <laughs> so, it doesn't. I don't have to move the yeah. move the bar very far. <laughs> so I was able to I was able to uh, kind of lift with them. And they said, "Hey, why don't you be part of you know the big rally?" You know, because hmm. you're one of the local youth pastors. Yeah, it's like that would kind of you know give you some skin in the game in front of the students. Like, yeah, that's fine. So then they taught me how to tear a phone book and, you know, because this is public property, I won't, you know, give the secret to it. But there's a trick to all of it. Okay. You know, I mean, uh, bending, the bending of the bars, It's there's tricks to all of it. That makes it fairly easy. The hard one, though, is actually blowing up the rubber hot water bottle. That's actually very difficult. Huh. I could never do it. Huh. Um, but I did a few fill-ins for them. Okay. You know, they somebody couldn't make it, I would take off, you know. Hmm. Um, but I, it, I didn't, I wouldn't do much with them, yeah. you know, but I've been, you know, but youth in, ministry was a big, yeah. So story. I started youth ministry right out of the gate. Okay. Um, you know, at the end of 20 years old, all going in Arkansas. 21. No. So I've been a youth pastor in, um, Arkansas and Tennessee. Okay. Um, a couple stops in Arkansas and two stops in Tennessee. Okay. And, uh, and then I left Tennessee to go to Alabama to be the vice president of a conference ministry, conference camp and tour ministry called mm. strength to stand. Right. And uh, it's a huge conference. I think it might actually be the largest student conference in America. Okay. And that's where like itinerant speaking took off. Okay. How old uh, were you at that time? Uh, so that would have been 2015. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I had, you know, different stops in, in youth ministries and, and then, you know, because I, you know, I, I'm kind of a builder. I, I don't mm-hmm. typically hang very pl- a place very long. Sure. Yeah. At, at least I haven't so far. Right. I love to go and, and create and build and then hand off. Yeah. It's my favorite thing yeah. to do, you know, especially if it's healthy, mm-hmm. you know. And so I went to Strength to Stand, and uh, I, I love the the ministry. Um, the events were incredible. I got to hang out with some of the you know the biggest names out there, and that was awesome. You know to to get to hear their stories and mm. you know see who man some of these guys are. They're just for real servants. Mm. I mean, they just love what they do, and they love people, and they just want to use their gifting. You know, mm. and that's amazing. But I miss pastoring people. Mm. You know, because I've pastored people ever yeah. since I met Jesus. Yeah, right? right. Yeah. And so I'd go speak at events of you know thousands of people, but I didn't know them. Right. You know, it, it makes you be thankful for the power and the simplicity of the gospel, mm. and it is for everyone. Mm-hmm. But whenever you get down to the life portion of it, I didn't get to invest. Right. You know, and so I was like, man, I don't know how that's, how's this play out in my life? Right. So I just felt like this season of, man, I, I know I'm not here very long. Mm. Um, and, you know, we're able to kind of re, uh, redesign and rebrand. So I was part of the branding side of it, just mm. getting straight to stand, you know, to, at that point, 2017, you okay. know, what does it look like? Okay. Um, but then a church in Birmingham, that's where the conference ministry was, um, a church in Birmingham called Christ City Church. Okay. Um, they had they had um, let go of their pastor, and mm-hmm. they, they really needed a season of figuring out what's our next steps. Kind of like an interim role, maybe? Or? Kind of. Okay. I, I don't think they ever titled me that, but sure. they just said, hey, man, would you come fill in for you a few weeks yeah. while we get our game plan together? Um, I knew the worship pastor really well, and one of their elders was a – one of my coworkers at okay. Shrink to Stand. It's like, yeah, sure. You know, I, I'll come fill in, you know, when I can, when I'm not on the road. And and so that was in uh, October and November 
of 2016. Okay. And man, I, I mean, it's in the project community, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's, it's a hard community, Bessemer in Lipscomb, Alabama. Mm. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll do that. And I just fell in love with like, what's the vision of this place? Mm. You know, man, we're, we're really trying to do it the third way. You know, there's, there's your normal way and there's people that just, they try to go away different and you know, it's the pendulum swing mm -hmm. and we're trying to find the middle, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I preached there for a few, you know, those two months. And then they had a, a, a series where they brought former pastors back, mm -hmm. like David Nasser planted the church. And so okay. he came back and uh, a couple other guys came back and, and in January they said, Hey, would you consider leading us? Stand. Yeah. And so I told him, I was like, yes, but I'm not your long-term mm. guy. I would rather relaunch because church needs to be relaunched mm. and then let's get it healthy and hand it off. Mm. So we did. And uh, How and long did that take? Three years. Three years. Yeah, so two and a half. So okay. when I came on staff with Strength to, or, uh, with Mission of Hope, yeah. I knew that my season, because I was part-time. So, right. so I was so resigned from Strength to Stand. Mm -hmm. um, and then... I was at Christ City Church and Mission Hope came online. Okay. And so I was able to function out of my office at the church. Okay. But start with church partnerships yep. with Mission Hope. Yep. Um, and then, you know, they Mission Hope asked me to move down and go full time. Yep. And so I was actually interviewing a youth pastor at the time. Okay. And when Melanie and I met with uh, Philip and his wife, we got out in the truck. And I was like, he's not the next youth pastor. Hmm. And she was like, you're right. He's the next. He's, he's the guy that's going to fill in right, yeah. for you. Yeah, that's cool. And so he's, you know, He's still the He's guy. doing it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so well, that's kind of how I met you is through Mission of Hope. Because yeah. at the time, I was uh, pastoring a church in Destin, mm -hmm. um, and we had this great guy named Doug Barker. Doug Barker. Who would come to Coastline Destin once a year in a three piece suit. Yeah. The bishop, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful guy. Like when he speaks, it's like molasses just comes yeah. out of his mouth. Just yeah. a wonderful, sweet man who was kind of the representative that we connected with with Mission of Hope, a ministry right. in Haiti. And then Doug reached a season where he was ready to. Mm. What does he do now? Uh, he he's a rancher. Yeah, that's what yeah, I he's thought. got. A, he's got a beef farm. Yeah, a beef farm. Yeah, yeah. And so he was going to retire, and mm. you came in um, to kind of take his, you know, part of his position yeah. and see it expand. So that's mm. how we first got connected. And during that time, I transitioned from pastoring in Destin to back to my hometown of Gulf mm. Breeze, and that's where we're sitting today. Yeah. You're still connected to Mission of Hope. Yeah. I'm still connected in Gulf Breeze, yeah. and so that's kind of what brought us to a point of connection, right. you know, was Mission of Hope and the meal packing event that happens in Destin, Fort mm -hmm. Walton Beach area. And then at the time of this recording, you just helped us kind of launch our first meal pack right. uh, on Saturday where we just kind of did your first, like kind of like entry level meal yeah. event, like yeah. a 20,000 meal right. Right. event, which um, just over the weekend, I've already heard so much wonderful feedback from yeah. even people on staff and That's great. people in the congregation had never had an opportunity mm -hmm. to participate in something like that. Um, and uh, it's just been amazing. Because, you know, our church, I mean, even with the little set design that's behind you, I think there's like a, a little map of the country of Haiti. Right. There's, some, there's some stuff yeah. from there. Haiti has been a part of the culture of our church mm -hmm. since the early 90s. Right. My, my father took me down there when I was 15, and then um, he did pastoral training, and there mm -hmm. were construction trips. And then in the early 2000s, after I moved back from college, we got connected to a missionary couple that we've been connected to since the 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, Haiti just has such, it's like in our backyard is the way we feel about it. It's like the, you know, the poorest country in this hemisphere. Right. And for us to be able to just turn to blind eye, just didn't feel appropriate. Right. You know, we needed to invest yeah. there. And so, you know, since the 90s, um, we've been taking trips and investing. Mm -hmm. But while I lived in Destin, um, the organization known as Mission of Hope surfaced as an opportunity hmm. to reach out in different ways. And so yeah. we started to partner with mission trips and mm -hmm. um, sponsoring different things. We even had a couple students, at least one that I know of, that moved there for the summer and hmm. did an internship. And um, now we find ourselves you know, serving your coffee in right. two different yeah. coffee shops yeah. and um, looking forward to more opportunities and partnering together with you guys. Because I'd love to hear more a little bit about why you're connected to that organization yeah. and what's the heartbeat of it. And as you see it, what's the future of it? I mean, Haiti goes through um, challenging seasons in, For sure. in the decades that I've been connected to that country, be it natural disaster or the politics or whatever it is. Sure. But tell us a little bit about Mission of Hope, what attracted you to it yeah. and what it's doing now. Yeah, so I, I first went to Haiti in... Uh, 
two, December of 2010. Mm. So there was a major earthquake, right? January 12th, 2010. Right. Remember that? Uh, that just devastated the, mm-hmm. the capital city and the surrounding communities, right? And so I didn't I didn't necessarily respond out of that. That's not why I went. I was actually taking teams to another uh, city in Mexico, mm. but then the Zeta drug cartel took over that community. Oh wow! And so I couldn't. I just couldn't take students there anymore. So I, I approached my my lead pastor and I said, "Man." You know, we can't go there. Can I go check out Haiti hmm. and just see, is there an opportunity there for us? And so he gave me his blessings. Yeah, I'll take a couple guys with you. And and so uh, went December 27, 2010, was my first time to step foot on was the ground. Was with Mission of Hope? Or was Not this yet. Just, okay. Not yet. Wow, just in Haiti. Yeah, just in Haiti. And I, I went with a guy um, from a Baptist association out of East Tennessee. He met us um, in the uh, – used, <laughs> used to be in the airplane hangar. That they switched over, and because after the earthquake, the airport got yeah pretty pretty broken, yeah, you know. Pretty broken up. And so they took an airplane hangar, and converted it to the immigration office, you mm. know. And so like this guy's meeting me there. I've never met him before. None of the three of us that are on this trip have ever met him. So we get we get to the guest house. We're staying in Port-au-Prince. There's a guy named Ron Watson who's Haitian. Mm. He's the only Haitian I know, and uh, he's driving and our translator. And then the guy that brought us there, met us there from East Tennessee, said, hey, guys, I'm passing a kidney stone. I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, well, welcome to Haiti. What? Yeah. <laughs> he said, Ron, I take care of you. You don't need to leave. And I was like, I know uh, no one. I, yeah. I know not one person in the country of Haiti. And so we go around orphanage. I'm just like, hey, guys, you want to stay or go? And they're like, oh, let's stay. I was like, all right, yeah. let's do it. You Making know, an adventure. Yeah, yeah. And so we went to all these different places and um, ended up in this little village, village called Williamson. Okay. And uh, it's down Route National 1. And. Uh, we actually passed by Mission Hope. I just didn't know what, what it was, it was yeah. you know. And so I ended up taking um, uh, some teams through, just just organizing it all myself. Wow. You know, we're staying in Port-au-Prince, driving back forth to Williamson. Just you know, out of your local church. Yeah, and, yeah. And you know, I was the logistics coordinator and supply right. guy and translator finder. And so that's kind of what we've done in Haiti yeah. before we met you guys. That's how our church would operate. Yeah, we just kind of run it. You know, yeah, and, VBS or construction right. or whatever. Yeah. It is. And so we just planned it all out. You know, I had a group said, "Man, you're in charge of kids club. We're going to work on this construction project. Right. Here's how we're going to go out in the village. Right. Um, just all those. You know, we brought dentists down. How we're going to do a dental clinic. Yeah. You know, well child checkups, taking pediatricians. So like, had all these things going on. Probably took. I don't know, six, eight trips uh, on our own. And then uh, the chair of our elder board um, at Fellowship, where I was serving, and our executive pastor, who um, managed just a hero in my life, his name is Randy Pearson. Um, we all three go down to Haiti to look for a better place for our teams to stay, mm. a safer and closer place for it. Because Port au Prince can get pretty sure crazy. Dicey, yeah. And so we're down there, and uh, Charles, who was the chair of the elder board, one of the most probably the one of the wisest guys i know on the planet he's asking all these questions and and all of a sudden randy just interrupts him now i'm the student pastor you know and i'm like he just interrupted charles campbell like you don't do that right like just don't don't do that and he just turns around and he he taps this guy on the back shoulder and it's otis uh-huh. he said you're answering this guy's questions to those people you're with otis was there on a vision trip mm. with, through mission of hope mm. Otis is the vice president of Mission Mm -hmm. Hope. Mm -hmm. And so next thing you know, Otis is going to our orphanage, into our village, and then we're going to Mission Hope. So that would have been 2013, Mm. 2012, sorry, 2012 when that happened. And uh, and so we just all got, we just, we just saw that, man, we have a lot of the same values, Mm. you know, of of how we want to approach this, this ministry in Haiti, because we didn't have a clue what we were doing, but we knew where we knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know how to do it, right? We didn't know how to, you know, how do we provide funding for this orphanage? Because you, you hand a Haitian a few thousand dollars a month, they've never held that money in their life. It, it, it can go bad real fast. And so we started talking to Otis and ended up on a vision trip, just blown away by Mission of Hope. Mm. Otis became a, a real dear friend of mine over the next several months and actually and become one of my mentors. Mm. And I just told Otis one time, I was like, man, someday I love to do what you do. Mm. And his words were, be careful what you ask for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So fast forward, you know, so go back to where I was doing the conference ministry, ended up at Christ City Church. Mm-hmm. I just called Otis and was like, man, you know, this is this is where, you know, this is what I'm praying through. And, you know, we're going over to Christ City. And I know I'm just, it's for a season. I don't really know what that looks like, man. And, and uh, he said, well, you need to consider coming on staff with us, mm-hmm. you know. And so it took about, it was about a, you know, three or four month process. Mm. And then they let me stay at the church, hmm. you know, for that first year, not hmm. about nine months while, 
we found the next person. Okay. Right? Yeah. So that's how I ended up there. Mm. Um, but we took probably 30 teams through Mission of Hope, mm. you know, th- from fellowship. Mm-hmm. And it's just mind boggling. You know, every time I went on there, it felt like something else had expanded. You know, when I first met them, they were doing 70, feeding 70,000 kids a day. Now we feed 121,000 kids a day. You know, they had 200 employees. Now we have 417. Mm. You know, there wasn't even a sports, there wasn't even a thought of a sports complex. Mm-hmm. And now it's, the best sports complex in the country. Right. You know, where now we're having village tournaments. So all these yeah. communities are forming their own soccer teams. Yeah. They're coming out and doing a tournament and there's thousands of people coming to watch and we share the gospel with all of them every weekend. Yeah. You know, so it's just, you know, what and what really attracted me, you know, Neil, about Mission Hope was if it wasn't about the local church, the local pastor, I didn't really want to be a part of right, it. Right, right. But the fact that Mission Hope's name is only on their main property. Mm-hmm because we're always going to champion the local church mm-hmm. and the local pastor. Mm-hmm. Cause like the pandemic hit mm-hmm. that local church, that local pastor was still there. Right. North Americans were not there. Right. You right. know, so that's what I love about it. It's like, man, I get to go and equip those pastors to do the work mm-hmm. of the ministry mm-hmm. and I get to do it from here and then take it there and say, man, mm-hmm. there's a, you know, coastline Calvary. They're with you, pastor Joe. Right. You know, right. they're with you, you know, fill in the blank. Right. And right. Uh, that's what I love about it yeah. is it's making real difference. It works with integrity, you know, and, they allow me to just run you right. know, and, and dream and to go. And, uh, you know, we, we truly believe at within our lifetime, Haiti will go from being a receiving nation, mm-hmm. you know, receiving the, the missionaries and receiving food to being a sending nation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's our dream. Yeah. You and know? you mentioned the other day when we were having lunch that you're seeing some inklings of that already becoming a sending. Yeah. yeah. So we have a, a after the earthquake in 2010, all these organizations came in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and we needed all of them. You know, Haiti needed all of them. And they all came in. They put up tents and, and tarps and set up this field hospital and that field hospital. But then they were all gone. Mm-hmm. You know, with three months later, they're gone. And the Haitian people are just stuck on the side of a mountain where all these tents mm-hmm. were. And there was no um, structure in place. So what's next? How, mm-hmm. how do schools get back going? How, mm-hmm. how, how do these people get their prosthetic limbs they need? You know, right. and so there's all these pieces and you know, God just burst a, a passion in Brad and Vanessa of we need to create a network of like-minded ministries across the country of Haiti called Haiti One mm. that if natural disaster, not if, but when, hurricane mm-hmm. or whatever, when it happens, we can activate the network and they can all come, mm. right? And so August 4th, for, here's an example, August 14th of last year, earthquake hits. Mm-hmm. North Americans can't get in there really, mm-hmm. right? Um, because of pandemic and just insecurity from yeah. things that happened. Yeah. So we activated Haiti One Network. So there's 600 plus organizations connected to Haiti One, 260 ish of them activated and came to the earthquake zone. Mm. You know, and so that's never happened mm. in the history of Haiti that we know of, mm. especially not that many organizations. Mm-hmm. And God just used that that dream of man. What if Haiti responds to itself mm-hmm. and it can respond to the Caribbean? Mm-hmm. And, and that's where we're headed. You know, for the next three years, our goal is to, you know, put outpost of Mission Hope in 30 islands in the Caribbean mm. to where if natural disaster or something happens in St. Thomas, mm-hmm. for instance, well, then they can be activated out of Haiti through Haiti One. And we're actually going to call it Caribbean One <laughs> to where now all the countries can now respond together, mm-hmm. you know, with real needs to meet spiritual needs also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's kind of the vision of where yeah. we're headed. You know, yeah. and as kids grow up through school, then they go through our tech school, our trade school. Mm-hmm. Now they can become ambassadors in workplaces, but then they have a skill set if something happens in their country, another right. country, we can say, hey, we know that you're a certified welder through our school. Right. We need welding. Right. And so they can go. Right. I mean, yeah. I remember being on campus with you in 2021, we did um, what you guys call a vision trip right. to both your operation in Haiti and also the DR. And it was amazing to see, and please help me fill in the blanks here if I'm missing this, but about 5,000 students on campus right. yeah. in that elementary to primary, you know, all the different yeah. schools, all the way up through high schools, how we would identify it. But then also these trade schools right. for, um, you know, students that are in their 20s or late teens. Mm-hmm. Um, because you, you guys are multifaceted. I mean, you're right. into church planting, mm-hmm. nutrition, mm-hmm. education, anything else I'm missing beyond those? Th- I mean, I've well, seen the medical side, the of, medical it too, side yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, so many facets right. to Mission of Hope. Um, and it's got a beautiful story. H- mm-hmm. How do we find out more about Mission of Hope? Because you, there's, you could talk about yeah, the, that organization <laughs> long know, for time. hours. Yeah, long so time. So people are interested in finding out, how do I yeah. partner? What do I 
what what are the touch points for yeah, Mission I mean, Hope? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way is to go to missionhope.com. Right. You know, what I would say is, you know, once you go to missionhope.com, actually go watch the videos. Okay. There, there is the about section in our story where you can read it if you right. prefer to read. Right. Um, but, man, our videos, our team has done a really great job yeah. of telling the story. Right. About how Mission Hope was founded. Right. Uh, to where it is today. Right. You know, and, and uh, it's, it's really good. And, and it's of, kind of like, I mean, I know... Um, the Brad, the individual yeah, who's Brad, leading yeah. it now, he comes from a mission family. So it's it's not yeah. necessarily in its second generation, but he's a second generation missions guy. Yeah, so Brad's mom right. um, was, uh, she used to take choir tours down, she used to take North Americans down for choir tours right. through the country of Haiti, right? And so Brad started going to Haiti in, uh, when he was five years old, and he's 56 now. Okay. So, I'm sorry, 51. Oh, man, if he oh, listens to this, <laughs> I'm sorry, Brad. <laughs> so, but, so he's been going for he's 40. He's got the wisdom of a 56. There, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, so he's, you know, he's been going for 45 years. Wow. And, uh, you know, and so they traded a um, – his dad traded a pipe organ – for our first piece of property. So it is in its second generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so That's they were amazing. they were doing mission work, you know I mean? They were taking people down and um, they actually own a, a, a camp in Missouri, a yeah. student camp in Missouri, but um, yeah, so Brad Brad came out of that, you know, and he and Vanessa went down on a trip on their own and that's yeah. tragedy struck and right. you know, that's how everything started. They said, we can't yeah. look away, we gotta yeah. respond to it. I've heard you share that story. I've heard Brad share that story mm -hmm. on that vision trip that we had the opportunity to participate in. And I would encourage anyone who's interested to check out the online content yeah. because it really does give a robust viewpoint of all that Mission of Hope has been, where you are and where mm -hmm. you're going. Yeah. So you've got great leadership. And mm -hmm. you know, I think from front to back, top to bottom, however you wanna look at that, sure. great people involved yeah. in many different ways yeah. with Mission of Hope, both stateside and mm -hmm. then like you're saying, seeing it become a sending hub yeah. for that whole Caribbean area. Um, yeah. It's amazing. Well, a couple of the other things I wanted to talk about before we wrap up and let you eat lunch and then go yeah. and like hang out with students all sure. week. Um, you know, we have something in common and it's actually tattooed on your arm. Yeah. It's uh, Philippians chapter three, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of, I wouldn't call it my first Bible, mm -hmm. but it's the Bible that I went through Bible college with. And at that time, if you didn't read like the old King James, there just was, you weren't really cool. I right, mean, there was right, just a right. pastor who spoke like, he had no notes, you know, yeah, right. from a calfskin Bible, King James. Right. So we all got it. We're like, oh, that must be the Bible that Jesus wrote or something, mm. you know. So, but I, I pulled this <laughs> Bible out just because I wanted to read it from the old King Jimmy. Mm. Uh, Philippians 3.14, Paul writes, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And depending on what translation you read, be it the Old King James, New Living, mm -hmm. ESV, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's that concept of moving forward. Right. And you've got that kind of tattooed on your arm. Yeah. We won't talk about the other tattoo you've got. I think it's on your ankle. Or yeah, something. it's on my ankle. Yeah, there's student. I mean, it's not work. bad. It's not bad. No, but it's just another <laughs> whole story. Let's clarify that. <laughs> another whole story. Another whole story. Yeah. Um, but tell me a little bit about why that's on your arm. And I mean, because that, that passage for me mm. is the life verse that I was given um, from my parents. I have right. it on a plaque. I keep right. it in my office. And I've seen that verse really help bring such clarity, focus, mm -hmm. and even direction for my life. When I'm at junctions where I go, well, what do I do? Yeah. You know, and oftentimes when you don't know what to do, you should do what you know to do. Right. And often it's moving forward. And even in your message this morning to the church, you talked so much about living sent mm -hmm. and living sent to serve, right. not going forward to kind of conquer and for your own glory right. and your right, own right. good, but for people's good and for God's mm -hmm. glory. So um, what about that? I mean, I know this verse and what it means to me, yeah. but obviously it means something to you. You got it on yeah. your Yeah, so I lost my dad on March 19th last mm -hmm. year, and uh, it was rough. You know, my dad's always been the biggest, strongest guy mm -hmm. I've ever met, you know, just mentally and physically. and. Battled cancer for a couple of years, uh, actually defeated cancer. Then he got COVID, then defeated mm. COVID, um, and then just had some complications in uh, where uh, one of his surgery was for cancer. Mm. And uh, and it caused him, basically, because of all the medicines they had to put into him, it caused basically his organs to become mush. Mm. And, uh, and so put my dad in hospice. Um, you know, my mom, she's like, I just, I can't make the decision. So like, I had to make that decision, you know, and uh, you know, it, man, the enemy likes to play tricks on your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, like, was that the right decision? Like he's fought for two years and I mm -hmm. chose for him to not be able to fight, you know, mm -hmm. those things. And so I watched my dad die, you know, March 19th of 2021. And, uh, which will be a year ago this yeah, Saturday. Yeah. This coming up Saturday will be a year. Yeah. And, um, man, it, I, I spun for a while, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, uh, so oftentimes my, 
previous to this, like kind of the verse that I've hung on to is Colossians one um, or Colossians three one through three. You know, oh, it's yeah. like to seek and set your mind on the things that are above, right. where Christ is. You yeah. Know? Um, but whenever I lost my dad, I was at the point where I don't know that I was angry, mm. but I was numb. Mm. You know, like I just I never lost anyone that close. Mm. You know, and uh, if, if I can be super transparent, I'm like, God, you've answered so many other people's prayers that I've been around. Mm. God, I, I, I've been in other places where I watched a blind lady actually receive her sight back. Mm. Like I watched it right in front of me, you mm. know. Why didn't you heal my dad? Mm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. like my daughter's 15, you know. Um, I wanted my dad to see her go on her first dance. Right. You right. know, I wanted him to see my son drive, you right. know. And so like, I just spun, man, mm. you know, like I'm just, I was just ready to quit. Right. You know, it's like, I'll just go back to the gym world. Right. It's almost like Peter, right. you know, like Peter, right. like, I'll just go back fishing. Right. You know? Right. You know, and so that's where I was. I was just like, I, you know, I'm giving my whole life away with Mission of Hope right. and speaking and trying to be a good dad and being a good husband. Right. And God, you ripped my dad out of my life. Right. The greatest influence in my life. And, um, you know, I led my dad to the Lord eight yeah. years ago over the casket of his brother. Wow. And so, um, and so, man, it was just, it was really difficult. So I got to the place where it's like, I'm, I'm just done. You know, and um, not done with life, you know, because like, man, I, I, I love my family. Sure. You know, yeah. and so not that kind of done, but just, God, if I'm going to give you my life in ministry, you could have at least answered that prayer. Right. <laughs> you know, right. that's where I was. Right. And, uh, you know, and then there was a lot of anger. Man, I didn't sing. I, I love to sing and worship. Like, I, I'm not a very good singer. You can't sing. You like yeah, to sing. I love <laughs> to sing. Like, I just, yeah. I, I feel like I can, con- I feel right. like I connect no, in that, you absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's a holiness. In, so, yeah. Yeah. And, I didn't sing one song for probably eight months, mm. you know, I mean, seven or eight months. I just couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, where, you know, you go into church and they're singing about death and resurrection. And I'm like, well, my dad's still dead. Right. You know, and so that, that was my mentality. Sure. And, uh, you know, I don't, I honestly don't even remember who gave me the verse, right? Mm. Um, other than just the Lord. I mean, I, I was, I just remember somebody reading it over me, mm. you know, and, just I just heard the word forward. forward, even though I know forward is actually in verse thirteen, you know. But it's you know you move forward from the things of the past. But the word toward to me yep. still is a direction, yeah. You know, and so I was preaching at a camp last summer, and uh, this kid came up who lost his mom two weeks before camp, mm. and he said, and I just talked about my dad that mm. day, you know, because I whenever I preach a funeral, like I preach my dad's funeral, you know, I just tell him what, you know, like my my. I've done a funeral where I'm pretty sure the person did not know Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And so either way, whenever I do that funeral, no matter where where I'm at, I always tell them they've seen the king, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and they would tell you to follow Jesus Mm -hmm. because they've seen him. Right. You know? Right. So this kid asked, you know, TJ, how did you move forward? Or no, he said, how did you move on? And I was like, man, I I don't think you do move on. Mm -hmm. I said, moving on to me communicates I forgot. Right. And I don't want to forget my dad. I'm not going to forget him. But I said, but you can move forward. Mm-hmm. And so immediately, like Philippians 3.14 came up. It's like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press on. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to press on towards this goal, this higher calling mm-hmm. of, you know, at some point I will be in eternity, mm-hmm. you know, and my dad will be there, and that's going to be awesome, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm going to be in eternity with the king. Right. You know, that's the right. greatest blessing of all of it. Right. You know, and the reunions, you know, I don't know what those look like and how they were, but I know right. I'm going to be with Jesus. Right. You know, and so I'm like, man, I, I'm going to press forward, A, that's what the, the Lord would want me to do. Mm-hmm. B, my wife has encouraged me and she's spurring me on, man. Mm-hmm. My kids are praying for me for the first time verbally out loud, like wow. deep, deep prayers, not yeah. just, you yeah. know, God is great, God, God is good. Yeah. You, know? Yeah. you know, and I know that my dad would want to do that. Mm-hmm. And my mom was constantly saying, TJ, you can't give up. Mm-hmm. If you give up, you know, that just means, you know, the enemy wins on all this. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you can't, you can't mm-hmm. do it. And I was like, well, I'll try. Mm-hmm. You know, and so like these these arrows represent seasons of life, right? Like it's just different seasons, but this one's constant because it's the Lord, mm. right? And so in the word forward, I I wanted it. I didn't know where to put it other than I wanted to see it every time I looked down. Mm-hmm. You know, just keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. don't retreat. Mm-hmm. You know, so that yeah, so that's that's where it came from. But yeah. it's um, uh, it, it's it will be obviously with me forever. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, until I pass. But I um. I want to be known for moving forward in the kingdom. 
right. moving forward with the Lord. Right. You know, and it's not always easy. Yeah. It, it's okay to grieve. Right. I had to learn that. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's okay to have a bad day. Yep. You know, but it, it's the question is, will I get up and move forward right. beyond that day? Yep. You know, and so that's that's where I just have to keep going back to right. Philippians 3.14. Like, right. I, I need to move. Right. I got to keep going. Right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you man. know, I've heard an author once say, God doesn't waste anything, um, mm -hmm. and you don't want to be one who wastes your pain, but yeah. you allow God to work in you and through you. And yeah. I think the Apostle Paul, like when he's writing that, we mm -hmm. know this because we've taught the Bible mm -hmm. once or twice, and <laughs> Philippians is that epistle of joy. Right. You know, and I wonder sometimes um, with the Apostle Paul, it wasn't that he waited for the emotion than to put the motion in. Right. But he put the motion in. And I'm going to yeah. show up today and do what I know to do. Yeah. And I'm not looking for the emotion. And we know that joy often isn't that. Right. But that sense of like, man, I'm good. You know, yeah. I'm settled. Often that comes just through living a rhythmic life, mm -hmm. through doing the things that you know God tells mm -hmm. you to do. And as you just keep moving forward and trusting him, he does things that only he can do. Yeah. But he won't do that for you. You know, right. you've got to take that step. That's right. And so it's neat to hear your story because as I hear it, um, some some of this for the first time, some of it mm -hmm. not. It's interesting how when you first heard the voice of the Lord, you were in that space where you were kind of, I don't know, um, poking holes, um, yeah. maybe feeling a little bit like a little bit of a transactional relationship with mm -hmm. God before you for came sure. to know him. And it's almost like the enemy sought to bring you back down again 20 years later, right. however long it's been. Right. Um, with a similar test, but you pass the test, yeah. you know? And I think you have to pass it daily. You know, sure. it's not like you yeah, for sure. forget it. And then, no, you keep every single day. You don't graduate from Christianity 101. Yeah. Man, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. Right. I'm going to live for the kingdom. I'm going to serve others. But um, thank you for your example on yeah. that. Well, you know, the, the phrase that you probably heard this phrase like, well, time heals you know, things. Right. And I, I, it frustrates me, you know, because to me that means, well, I'm not remembering, you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, it's not, I, I think the phrasing that I, I used a few weeks ago was, it's not that times heal, it's that God restores, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and that may take time, but it's not, it's not time that's healing me. Right. It's God's restoration process right. in my life, right. you know, and showing me the pieces in me that's not of him, right. you know, and, and helping me understand why is that in me? Right. You know, what, what's that emotion? What is that frustration? And in the meantime, I'm going to keep pressing forward. Right. You know, while I'm learning. Right. You know, cause sometimes retreat is, um, and, you don't want to retreat away from God, but you want to retreat to get closer to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it, it, there's a distinction in that, right? Right. And so I just want to keep moving forward while still being in the restoration process right. of, okay, God, I, I trust you, right? You know, and one of my gifts is faith. Like that was that was a big chink in my armor, right? You know, this past year, and it's like, okay, God, like restore my faith, right? Where I know that all things you do are good, right? Right. Because that sure didn't feel good, right? You know, but. God, I trust you. So that that's that that process. So it's moving forward mentally, you know, emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and even with my own, you know, the, my skill sets. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna move forward while I'm being restored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I bet. love that verse. It's my yeah. life verse. Yeah. So it's neat to hear someone else's experience with it. Yeah. And how God's using it in your life. Well, kind of as we close down, a couple of very important questions. All right, I'm ready. Maybe. Why don't you like coffee? Man, I so. It's a weird thing. You yeah. know I'm a little odd. You like right? you're all about the texture of things food, are about not the taste. texture. Yeah. Well, things are about texture for me. Mm -hmm. uh, taste, like you said, doesn't. It, it, I don't really care. Yeah, it has to. The texture has to be what it looks like when it's in my mouth. Okay. So with liquid, uh, liquid should, be, should cold, be cold in your opinion. And I drink coffee and it's hot. And it's hot. So that's why you don't like it. But if I drink a cold brew, like I've tried that, uh, my brain won't let me drink it because coffee is supposed, supposed to, to be, be hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, yeah. Okay. I tried. To each his own. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, it's it's all mental. <laughs> yeah. No. Just a f few fun things to get to know you better. Like so, when you are home, mm -hmm. which is very rare, right. you're always on the move. Yeah. Uh, what's like? What is it that you love to do? I mean, tell us about the lines in your grass. What is that oh, all about? Oh man, I love my lines. Yeah. Where is that? So I have a little OCD tendency. Okay. Um, and I, like, I'll let my son, mo my son and daughter, like they can work on the backyard, but they're not touching the front yard. So everything. <laughs> I, I mow the exact same lines, which I, you're actually not supposed to do. You're supposed to cross yeah, cut them over sometimes. Yeah. But I have grooves in my yeah. grass where it's <laughs> it's perfect. I yeah. think part of it is like the That's world. It's got to be therapy. Yeah, something. it is. Because yeah. like the world I live in and even yeah. in ministry, you sure. know, man, you can work. You're like, yep. what is the result yep. of but you the can work? see those lines. But whenever my yard is done and it's, yeah. you know, all the grass is the same and the yep. bushes are trimmed, you're like. Yep. Progress. Completed yep. project. Yep. That's you know? right. Yeah. So it. 
yeah, it's it's therapy for me. Basically, what well, it is. what do you love most about what you do? I mean, there's got to be challenges yeah. to traveling. I sure. mean, nobody likes to see a hotel room or another flight. Right. You know, every. But I mean, you, you you're doing it. What do you love yeah. about what you do? The people I meet. Okay. You know, man, I get to. One of the things I, I love is, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a networker. I'm trying to get people to mobilize and become partners with Mission of Hope. But oftentimes I get to pastor pastors. Right. You yeah. know, because yeah. who does the pastor go to? Right. You right. Know, um, the pastors, you know, the, and I've been, you know, kind of different roles where, you know, man, pastors need people that can be kind of that outside listener. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and most pastors have an accountability system right. and, and a friendship system, people they can be held accountable to. Right. But sometimes that outside trusted right. ear is valuable. Yep. You know, that's true. And so there's that. That's probably my favorite. Um, but then just also seeing, man, the global church, mm. how it's functioning, mm. you know, specific global church to America, because that's right. where I spend 95 percent of my right. time. Man, I get to see a lot of churches and a lot of different leadership styles mm. in different styles of communities, mm-hmm. rural, urban, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, s- suburban, you know, just I get to see them all. And yeah. so I feel like I get to learn so much because yeah. everybody's leadership style is different. That's right. You know, that's everybody's right. aesthetics to their and the why is so different right and so i get to write all that down hmm. for whoever knows what god or whatever god's gonna right. have for me in the days to come right. or to take what i learned over here and say hey have you tried this yeah. to another yeah. pastor yeah because i saw it over here yeah that's cool. and so i think god just is is letting me see that and it's fun and yeah. i love to travel yeah so it's a good thing well you're getting you both know, of those so. yeah that's amazing to be able to have that vantage point of what god does in different places mm. at different seasons with different people because there's so many things that kind of like, hey, if this isn't a part of the church, this isn't healthy. If they don't love right. God, <laughs> yeah. we're in trouble. Yeah. If, <laughs> if they hate people, this isn't a, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, there's, but it's neat to see the why, the what, the who, the where, the when, the mm-hmm. is, is not of different local congregations. Right. So it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So you're going to be married 20 years. 20 years this August. This year. So a couple other guess quick things. What's date night look like for you and Melanie when you get a date <laughs> night? Like, What do you guys like to do together? Yeah, I mean, it. we're pretty low key. Okay, I mean, we'll... We lines look, in the yard. Yeah, lines in the yard, and then we go there. outside and we look at them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like look with it. <laughs> She's like, We're "That's in Texas, great, honey. Yeah, there's yeah. grass, not dirt." No, I mean, you know, we we like to go out to eat, but you know, we um, you know, we love to just anything competitive. She's a competitive You're physically too. Physically fit, yeah. yeah. You guys love to work. Yeah, out. I mean, we work out together yeah. when I'm home every every day. Yeah. You know, she comes out of she gets out of school. She's a kindergarten teacher right That's now. Right. And, yeah. Um, changing careers. Yeah, get her yeah. to take a new position. Yeah, kids yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, awesome. That happened this summer, but you know, we work out every day whenever I'm home after school, and so that's just good time to be together. And we don't put our headphones in. We actually talk. We're probably that couple. People are like, oh, they're talking, but I'm also the guy. I'm like, no, we're gonna get it done too. You right, know, so, right. but yeah, I mean, we we go out. We actually have some friends that are super close, and cool. David and Meredith. So we typically do a lot of double dating, cool. but. Um, yeah, we just try to find quality time when we can. Well, just a couple last questions, because if, if you hang out with TJ, you'll notice a couple things. One is the Air Jordans. You know, I do like Jordans. You love Jordans. Yeah. So why is it that you hate LeBron James so much? Oh, man, we don't have time on this podcast for that, <laughs> Pastor Neil. <laughs> do you really want to answer well, that? Well, maybe just do the short. Snip- so, or why is there so much dedication to MJ? Well, one, I'm a 90s kid. Okay, there you right? go. I mean, that, that's definitely part of it. But also, he is the best. Okay. I mean, he willed his teams to... To win. That's true. You know, whether people were angry at him, his teammates did, he would will them to win and he would always take the last shot. That's right. Right? Except in the one finals where he passed it off and uh, I think it was, who was it, Paxson that shot the three and made it to win the championship. Mm-hmm. That was the only time he ever did that. What was that. the Netflix series or the series that came out? Oh, um, Save the Last No. Save the Last Dance? Is that what it was? was it, or, or is that or a oh, 90s the, movie? No, la- The Last Dance. The Last Dance. Okay. Save the Last Dance, some 90s. Like, so film, LeBron, rom-com, he doesn't will him. He doesn't will the team to win. When he watches this, he might have something. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> <Come> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, the other night, I mean, the Lakers are playing pretty terrible right now. The other night, game winning shot. He won, this, he won the scoring title for the year. Right. But his team's not even going to make the playoffs. Team's not gonna make so it. what's it really about? Is it about his stats or is it about bringing his whole team along with him? And that's a great segue to ministry. Yeah. You want to be a team player. Yeah. yeah. Bring your team with you. Bring your team with you. Okay. Well, just in couple closing, if people want to stay connected to you, how do they do that online? I mean, either through Mission of Hope or yeah. what's a way to find out what God's doing in your life or the yeah. ministry or how can we stay connected to what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, so you can go on Instagram. You know, I, I post on social media. Um, Try to do it pretty regular, just to give updates, and it's at TJ Gillum. It's spelled like William with a G, mm-hmm. um, and then you can also search that also on Facebook. It's the same one, mm-hmm. and so just follow me on any one of those. And I try to keep people updated through there. Um, you can also go to tjgillum.com. dot com. You and got so a website? I do. Oh, I didn't I do. know that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check and that so out. And so it's just a little speaking website. Just oh, try to cool. keep a calendar yeah, so people right. can pray. I have seen that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not real robust. It yeah. actually links more to Mission Hope than it does my own stuff. You know. 
um, yeah, I mean, or just follow at Mission of Hope, you know, right. MOH Haiti, because that's that's really what you know I'm about. It's like, right. man, let's make this happen. Right. You know, let's get these kids fed and right. get these pastors equipped. Right. So yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today. Thank oh, you for being to. at Coastline for the week yeah. up ahead with Spring Retreat Sunday, the packing event. We're stoked to have you. It's and been a full uh, week. Or yeah. gonna be a full it's week. It's gonna be a full it's week. It's already been full. Already. We're just getting started, right? That's right? So yeah, thank you. Thanks, bro. Yeah.